All right, we got a 2014 Silverado torque converter shutter um, at in overdrive, um, like 70 mile an hour set to cruise. You could watch the RPMs kind of fluctuate. Um, so a torque converter, um, I got an OEM GM one, which I know probably not the smartest move, but it's the upgraded heavy duty version. Um, I probably should have got a billet one, but um, we're gonna try it and see what happens. I'm gonna show uh, how to pull the transmission out. But basically for me, it was easiest because I had uh, already deleted my muffler. So I just popped all the exhaust off. I got lucky, uh, none of my manifold bolts broke um, from the bolts going from the cats to the manifold, so that was pretty easy. Um, but a lot of times those will strip out, um, so you just gotta be really careful um, when taking those out. But this truck only has 80,000 miles on it, so um, not too much age on those. Uh, disassembled the exhaust, pulled it right out, pulled the transfer case out, pulled the transmission, super easy, really. Um, if you have a lift especially, it took me like three hours. Um, so here's the old torque converter seal. Pop that out with an O-ring pick. It, it comes right out um, once you pull that snap ring off. And then push the new seal in with your fingers. No special tool required, no driver or anything like that. Then the lockup O-ring, make sure you replace that because the other one was flat. So uh, that could also have been the issue leaking past the O-ring. So I'll uh, get the torque converter on, three clicks. So this shaft, that shaft, and then the two notches on the torque converter, when you push that in, uh, drive your transmission pump. So you'll feel three clicks and then you're good to go. Bolt the uh, transmission and torque converter up and throw it all back together. I pre-filled the converter, uh, put about a quart in it. Um, so it should be good, but it'll fill pretty quick once the uh, transmission pump starts to pump up in the truck. This is the converter out of the 2014 Silverado. I am the kind of guy that I have to uh, find out what actually failed. I don't just accept the fact that, that it, you know, it went bad. So I had to cut it open and check out what the uh, actual problem was. Now, so many people say that when the pan fills with the, the aluminum glitter flake, whatever, it, it's a sign of the converter failing. So I, I don't really know exactly besides the state or what's aluminum inside of the converter, but I wanted to find out just for future reference. Um, the impeller though looked good. Nothing, I, I don't think anything's out of the ordinary with the impeller, it looked fine. And the stator, I don't know that it's perfect, honestly. I think that some of the aluminum that I had found in my original filter I cut open was from these fins. It kind of like eroded. And I'm not sure if that's a common failure. I'm not sure if people really know about this or if it, I'm just kind of overreacting, but some of these fins are eroded. There's, there's pieces of aluminum kind of just missing. I'm not sure that that's from anything or just a poor casting from the factory, which I, I would assume that's probably what it is. Um, you can tell some of the uh, casting there is just not very good quality, but I, I don't know if that is an issue, but there was some cast aluminum in my original filter that I had cut open. So I assume that's probably where it's from, but I, I don't know exactly. But what I really wanted to find out is how the lockup clutch like actually works. I, I watched like a ton of YouTube videos to try to see how the lockup clutch works. And people usually just talk about it, but they don't show you and they don't really act. They just talk about how, yeah, the, the uh, clutch applies and blah, blah, blah. Well, I, I kind of want to know like how it really works. So I figured it out myself. Um, there is an O-ring that can fail, but you're not going to replace it. But that O-ring right there on the turbine housing this is flat like that actually is completely flat so I, I that could be a potential for failure that may have been what failed um the o-ring for the lockup on the shaft that splines with this was also pretty flat so i i, I think maybe the o-rings maybe had some leakage past them um but the clutch i'll show you in a second is is bad um, the actual lockup clutch has failed but I wanted to show you that this all moves as one piece. When, when the lockup happens, um, so there's there's pressurized oil coming into the shaft, and it's always disengaging the lockup clutch until the uh, transmission control unit tells it to send oil to the clutch to engage the clutch. So once the lockup clutch actually needs to become engaged, the oil that's kind of forcing it off of its seat will retract back to wherever and then 
it kind of reverses the flow and this becomes one big piston basically because these are splined together so this is splined um, your turbine housing is splined to your lockup clutch so they're going to spin as a direct drive and once it dis or once it you know unapplies the pressure holding the clutch away from the housing centrifugal force is going to force this turbine housing to want to go ahead and start locking up the clutch once that starts to lock up it also pressurizes basically this whole thing as a piston and that's what kind of pressurizes your lockup clutch so again these are splined together that is splined to your lockup clutch and here is the lockup clutch slash piston and there's no o-ring on the outside like most pistons inside of transmissions and stuff there's no o-ring out here because the idea i guess from my understanding is that once pressure is applied oil is going to be sealed all around the outside of the cavity because of the pressure on this on the pressure plate it's acting as a seal and a clutch at the same time if that makes sense so this clutch was not like completely bad yet but it was like i said the clutch or the truck was shuddering it on an overdrive and whenever the converter would lock up i could feel just a, sh a slight shudder and most people probably wouldn't notice it but i'm kind of ocd about my stuff and if you notice this clutch is like flaking off in my fingers so i can peel it off with my fingernails and that's not supposed to be like that and this clutch is not supposed to be black either it's supposed to be like the tint of transmission fluid like a dark red so that is a major issue and what kind of happened also is i assume that the uh, backing plate or the back of the torque converter you know this was all one piece i cut it with the grinder the backing plate has warped um or i mean whether it's warped or not the clutch has slipped on this and when the clutch has slipped they create a bunch of heat and i assume this is warped because like one side of this like right over here is like shiny like a mirror i don't know if you can really tell in the video other side is really really grooved up so you can tell the clutch has been slipping you know maybe not for a really long time it maybe it just kind of started slipping recently but i think i caught it right in time and you know that's that's kind of what i figured out here so the o-ring um, on your shaft that goes through your turbine housing the small id o-ring that's sealing um, disengagement so when, when the lockup clutch is being disengaged there's pressurized oil on on you know this on this side of the clutch disc and it's holding it away and then once the truck you know once the controller send or tells the uh, valve body to send the oil to engage the lockup clutch um, the oil holding this apart is going to retract and go to sump i assume i don't really know that part but go to sump and due to centrifugal force of this of your turbine housing that is splined to your clutch disc it's going to force the disc to begin um, matching the speed of your backing plate and then of course the lockup solenoid sends your pressure to this basically a piston now is what this is acting as the whole back the whole cavity is pressurized and holding your piston against the backing plate so I didn't really understand how a torque converter, I mean, there's a ton of good videos on how torque converters work, the actual functionality of the converter itself, but there's not, well, I haven't come across any good videos on how the lockup clutch actually works. People talk about them, but don't, it doesn't seem as if they actually know what is going on, but I like to just figure things out. So I think I figured it out. So anyone with a 6L80 um, in a suburban uh, Yukon, Chevy pickup, GMC truck. When they say your converter is failing, that is what it. That's what's happening basically. Now all the aluminum, I don't exactly know. Um, I'm not doubting anybody because I'm not a transmission guy, but I don't know exactly where all the aluminum is coming from because all this is steel. I mean everything is is solid steel. Um, your, your dampening hub is all steel. Springs are steel. Um, the only thing aluminum in the torque converter is your stator. And if these fail, uh, I guess that's, that's definitely possible. And like I said, this one was starting to kind of erode and that may be 
um, part of the issue. So that's what I found out and hopefully it helps somebody. So I serviced my transmission like a thousand miles ago um, when I first noticed a smidge of, maybe I, I was just kind of OCD too, and I noticed a smidge of the shutter that everybody talks about. Um, so I went ahead and serviced it just to see, you know, last case or last resort, whatever. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything at that point. Um, but the truck only has 80,000 miles, so I was hoping the transmission was fine. I, it is, I mean, I found out it is fine. <clears throat> but I cut open the original filter and I'll post, I'll put pictures on the video of the aluminum pieces that I found in there, but I don't think that they're actually anything bad. I think it's just the original casting because cast aluminum is kind of just dirty. It's not really that uh, precise. So I think that just the original casting um, probably got in the filter. And if you cut open any original filter, I bet you find something like that. But I, I don't know, I've never cut open a good filter, a good transmission filter for no reason. This is the original filter. Um, after seeing this, I went ahead and serviced the transmission, drove it about a thousand miles, and then decided to do the converter today. So after about a thousand miles on the transmission service, I basically just changed the fluid in the pan, the filter. So, I mean, you know, it's like six or seven quarts or whatever, um, but this is like literally perfect. So after a thousand miles, there's nothing, not a thing in here. I obviously didn't even need to replace this filter. But I wanted to find out. I just wanted to do some more research here. But this filter had nothing wrong with it. So I guess the moral of the story is if you catch a torque converter failure in time, you might be okay. Maybe. I've driven the truck. It actually drives great. Um, I think we're good to go. It actually shifts better than it. it drives really good. I've put like 50 miles on it. So I mean, nothing crazy. But I think we're in good shape. Um, so if, I guess the moral of the story is if you guys have a low mileage Silverado, Suburban, Tahoe, whatever, um, and you are a little bit concerned, you might go ahead and change out the converter. It may be too late though, I, I don't know, but I think I caught mine in time and it's driving really good. And hopefully the old 6L80 can hold up for a while. Uh, the problem is my wife's Suburban has the same transmission and torque converter and more miles. So. It doesn't have any issues at all yet, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. Have a good one. I forgot to mention that I actually just bought this truck too. So the guy probably knew there was something wrong with it, but that's okay, whatever. Um, I got it taken care of. Um, I did want to talk about the price. So the, the converter is a GM heavy duty. Uh, maybe it's upgraded from the factory. I don't know, but it's, it was from Rock Auto. It's probably the same piece of crap they put in from the factory on these trucks. But it was like 400 bucks. And then it would have been a $100 core charge, but I cut mine open because I wanted to see the internals. So I won't get that back, but that's fine. And then fluid and O-rings probably, I mean, you could probably do this for 500 bucks, give or take a little bit. And I had like, I bet eight or nine hours total uh, swapping it out and everything. So it's not really that big of a job, which I had a lift. So I guess I cheated, but I wouldn't be scared to do this. And you might want to catch it before it's too late because it could go from 500 bucks to like 5,000 pretty quick. So just make sure that uh, you get on it. Whenever you start feeling converter issues, it, it's that don't second guess yourself. You're probably right. If you feel something you think is converter shutter, you're probably right. And go ahead and just fix it because it'll save you a lot of money down the road.